unboxing when the Mitch Mason Millstone. Oh, look what I forget. Elshan said he's going to change to aluminum boxes next. We have the pouch. Ta da! Yes! This is the all titanium swordfish. A lot of plastics. plastics. This is super, super light though. Plastic. That's a lot of plastic. Designer notes, subject 133. Like, comment, and subscribe for content you'd like to see next. Follow us at Instagram at Aruba for behind-the-scenes content. Email us at designatileyaruba at gmail.com. This video is brought to you by Zelos Watches. The Swordfish 40mm Titanium Satin version is the official model name for this particular variant. The diameter measurement is 40mm as the model name suggests with 46 millimeters of lug-to-lug -lug distance. The thickness for this titanium swordfish is 12 millimeters with a water resistance of 200 meters. The lug width is 20 millimeters that tapers down to 18 millimeters to the clasp. Inside the watch is the venerable NH35 movement with a black date wheel. It has a 41 hour power serve, a bi-directional rotor, and 21,600 dph frequency. It also has a hack in seconds, which is always a plus. The whole watch is an exercise in excesses, and I mean that in a good way. The whole timepiece consists of high-quality materials. The watch case, bracelet, and even this dial is made of grade 2 titanium. The crystal is a flat sapphire crystal that's surrounded by a titanium bezel. This bezel has a ceramic insert. There is a stainless steel clasp that sort of feels out of place. However, having titanium clasp isn't going to be chum change either. But worrying about the value is the last thing that you should be considering on any Zelos watch. If you look at any dictionary worth its salt, Zelos means radical design at great value. My wrist certainly won't worry about value. All it cares about is that the watch won't swing like a hula hoop or won't choke like a sadistic metal dominatrix. With the short lug distance, the chances of wearing comfortably is very high, and I could certainly feel that on my 6 and a quarter inch bendage. This clasp is a flip lock variant with 6 adjustment holes. It has some very nice milk bridges and the familiar locking mechanism. It definitely serves its purpose and will secure your watch solidly. The removable links use screw pins, a very convenient choice. The case back from this view is the customary affair with a polished stamped sea creature swimming over a matte blasted background. But I'm a spoiled brat, and I think it looks rather plain now against other brands. But then again, I'm yet to meet a Zillos customer that bought their watch for the case back. A Zillos fan though can vouch for the very convenient quick release bracelet that multiplies the fun of enjoying a Zillos. It's so quick, my hands are already ordering coffee before I could finish mounting my script. Speaking of playing around with your watches, just listen. That is the sound of a 120 click titanium bezel on a robustly ratcheting mechanism. It's the Celine Dion of bezel actions and audio range. Oh, and it aligns very well too. Operating the watch is hassle free. 
You know the drill on dive watches. Unscrew the crown, and the first step of the crown is for changing the date. The second step is for hacking the second's hand and changing the hour and minutes. This crown protrudes out of the crown guards by almost 4 millimeters, maximizing the grip for this swordfish. Speaking of maximizing, the versatility of the swordfish takes center stage with all of the strap options you can have with just a few sets of bands. First, I tried it out on a cheap black and red NATO strap and it gives it a definite sporty feeling. This gives a great contrast over the iridescent dial and case. It also matches the black ceramic insert with its red triangle marker. Next, the bargain bin parade continues with a gray variant of the same NATO strap. It now delivers a more subtle explorer spirit that I'm certainly not going to be embodying anytime soon. But it's a cool combination that's enticing me to explore the great outdoors. But my lazy butt will remain resolute. Lastly, we tried on the channel favorite Artem strap. And oh boy, this one completely changes the look. The wonderful texture over the all-black color of the straps brings a utilitarian, even military look and feel to it. It just complements all of the angular geometry of the watch. While in the topic of geometry, I recognize that many of those buying this watch would likely have other Zelos already on their flock. This being 14 mm still looks considerably beefy compared to the 41 mm Zelos black tip. This is all because of those pronounced angles and edges. The thickness is very similar with the black tip's 11.5 mm of case height. The bezel, however, is much wider on the swordfish, giving it a smaller dial impression. Titanium also has a natural muted sheen compared to a steel shine. Next is the Titanium Mako, and immediately what you will notice when handling both watches is that they are both very light on your hands. Jonathan T. Reviews made a fantastic comparison of this new collection and mentioned that the new Swordfish weighs just 115 grams. The thickness is half a millimeter higher than the Mako, but you don't see it at all from this comparison. What you can see is that glossy appearance of the Mako. This is mainly due to the anti-scratch coating. Now it's time for its big brother, the all-titanium 42mm Swordfish. If you think it's practically the same watch, but enlarged for that more gargantuan wrist, you would be half right. The angles and proportions are very similar. You can see the difference in the crown dimensions with the 42mm being larger and more recessed in the larger crown guards. There is also a big difference between the two clasps. They are both stainless steel, but the clasp on the 42mm has the two less micro-adjust feature and more streamlined because of the lack of a flip lock. Yes, the likelihood of many of us using this micro-adjust mechanism is pretty close to a single digit out of 100, but I would still love to have one than not, even if I had to pay extra. Both watches are of course durable and can take much abuse. It will scratch like steel since neither of these two have the anti-scratch coating. But having that on the swordfish will inevitably just raise the costs. Titanium watches are hypoallergenic, so you can freely own one without it owning you. Let's now drop down to our examination table and have a closer look at that dial. You may notice by now, this dial is one of the most unique dials Zelos has ever made. This watch face is cut from a solid rod of titanium. This is then given an amazingly deep brush finish that traps light with its deep crevices while blasting out all of the rays of light at its peaks. It's stunningly radiant finish that looks like a mirror in reflectiveness. This vertical brush plays very nicely with the circular grain of the ceramic insert. It's a visually striking experience when you see both manipulate light. Every turn becomes a delicate dance of light drift and radiant streaks on the wrist. You can observe this visual valet even under low light conditions. The strong applications of C3 Super Limnoba and VGW9 bleeds out fantastically over the straight lines of the dial. 
There's a duality to this dial as well, as with the slightest of angles, it can go from stark shadow to a blinding metal. The watch hands and the date disc is also tastefully contrasted in black tone to provide a much needed visual rest. As you peer back on the watch, I sometimes feel the impression of wearing a bracelet because that dial just melts away as part of the case and band. It's like having a silver, gray, and white dial in just one watch. It's a jaw-dropping feature that I never thought I'd warm up to after seeing it in the metal. There might be some concerns on how the applied logo would look on this shiny dial, but I'm happy to report that it will be visible along with the text at the 6 o'clock position. This new collection will debut in a couple of days with 8 different variants slated for the release. There are a couple of firsts from Zelos, this titanium vertical brush dial, and a new red meteorite dial. The regular dials will be priced at $329 initially, with a carbon and titanium dial launching at $359. The red meteorite dial will be sold, or should we say likely sold out, for $429. This model has a limited number of 300 units. As much as this is a larger batch than many of the past releases, we will still see the inevitable countdowns and sold-out blog posts. If there was a time to be decisive, it should be before the launch countdown ends. The frenzy of buying Zelos watches at launch will be upon us once again. With each release, the brand never misses an opportunity to try new things, not just to keep the lineup fresh, but also to explore what many brands won't even dare entertain a sliver of thought. It's getting harder and harder to review Zillow's watches, not because they are cracking out a lot of variations or diving into more exotic and fresh ideas. It's getting more difficult because it's now harder to remove every ounce of bias. Because I'm a fan. Zillow's is a fan favorite because it delivers what the fans want and even the things we didn't know we actually wanted. Remember that stretch in the first decade of the 2000s when every single Pixar movie is a box office hit while being critically acclaimed? That kind of runaway dominance is what we're seeing here from Zillow's in the microbrand arena. And if it wasn't obvious yet, other brands in this playing field had some catching up to do. Thank you.